Hi y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a prophetic message from the Holy Spirit to share about the papacy, which is the office or authority of the Pope. So I'm gonna jump right into this word. And I'm believing that if you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, if, if you take this, what I'm about to share to the Lord, and you say, Lord, help me to interpret this, help me to understand this, help me to apply this, and say, Lord, is this from you? I believe the Lord will not only confirm this, that it's his voice that's speaking this, but also he will show you exactly what to do with it and how it applies and how it does not apply. Here's what I heard from the Lord. I saw a vision of monks inscribing the Bible and other texts. And then I saw classical murals on the walls around where they were. And these beautiful works of art, these iron gates and windows that were just you know, very intricately designed. And then I saw a vision of a vintage Coke fridge that opened at the top. And then I saw a Coke bottle with the logo, the Coca-Cola logo visible, and it was very clear, and it was pictured on the side of this vintage fridge. And then I saw the bottle by itself. And I believe the Lord was referring to His glory when He showed me that vision of Coke. And if you want to see how that applies, and then I'm about to move on, but if you want to see how that applies, I encourage you to go watch a prophecy about Bethel Church that I shared, uh, I believe, over a year ago or around a year ago. Uh, and in that prophecy, the Lord used Coca-Cola to talk about his glory. Moving on, the next thing I heard was this. I heard the Holy Spirit say, My glory surrounded the protection and accuracy of the scriptures throughout history. And he said, I carried it from one generation to the next. No man could stop what I had planned, what I strategized. And then I saw a vision of a stack of $100 bills. And on the side of the stack, I could see an image, almost as if it had been like imprinted on the side of this stack of hundreds. It was an image of Benjamin Franklin's face. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say this. He said, money is one of the main things people have traded the accuracy of the scripture for. He said, money monetary gain, temporary life alteration, something that won't last but fades with time. And then he said, but my word stands the test of time. It endures. It is eternal. And then the Lord asked this question. He said, you want to experience my glory on a new level? And he said, read the word and translate the principles behind the words to your life. He said, just do what it says and live. Life is in the blood. And I know he's referring to the phrase life is in the blood, but also the fact that our eternal life is found in the blood of Jesus. When we were lacking life, Jesus gave up his life so that we could be forgiven, redeemed, brought into the family of God. And when Jesus gave up his life, his blood was spilled. And now there's power in the blood because what God has required of us to receive that life is to simply believe in what Jesus did. Jesus said this, he said, this is the work that God requires of you, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So there's life in the blood, in the blood of Jesus. The next thing I heard was this, the word of life, the word made flesh, referring to Jesus, he spilled his blood for you. And then the Holy Spirit said, stop trading blood for water. Stop trading life for tradition. And I know what he's talking about is a lot of us as Christians, and I have more to share in a second, but a lot of us as Christians, we don't realize how good the new covenant of God's grace is. You know, in the Bible, there's an old covenant and then there's a new covenant. And the Lord is appealing to us, to Christians, to step out of the mindset of the old covenant and into the life and freedom of the new covenant. And if you want to know what the Bible has to say about these two covenants and how it views the differences, how it paints one covenant versus the other, I've released another video about this and there's going to be a link below. I encourage you to go watch that video. But I'm going to move on. The Lord encouraged me to share 2 Timothy 3, 1-7. through 7. 
It says this, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, slanderers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. And then it says, avoid such people as these. For among them are those who slip into households and captivate weak women weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That phrase should cut us so deeply, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. May that not ever be said of us. And unfortunately, it was the case for the Pharisees, you know, when Jesus walked the earth. He said that you diligently, to them, to the Pharisees, you diligently search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. But then he said, but you're unwilling to come to me. Jesus was the only one that could give them life. He was the only way to the Father. And some of us have traded the life that Jesus Christ has for us today, the hope, the freedom, the the union with God that we can have through belief in Jesus. We've traded it for dead works for the works of the old covenant. And God is calling us back to a place of relationship with him. A place of passion in our hearts, just to know God, just to be with him on a daily basis. The next thing I saw was, I saw a vision of a vehicle from the early 1900s. It was a classic car. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say, Returning to an old covenant mindset is like driving one of the first cars in a modern day race. He said, you've got no chance and there's no competition. There's no comparison. And he said, this covenant is better. My people. And when he said my people, I knew there was an exclamation point at the end of that sentence. He's trying to get our attention. He desperately desires us to walk in the life that Jesus has provided, the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. Not not the bounds of religion, not the bounds of our own efforts in trying to please God through what we do. We can never please God through what we do because we can never do enough to be perfect. Holiness, righteousness only comes through believing in what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. And walking in the life and freedom that God has for us only comes when we stay in that place of belief every single day. He said, this covenant is better, talking about the new covenant, my people. He said, it's better and it bears so much more fruit. He's, and then <laughs> he said, I can do so much more through it than I ever could through the old. And the word of God actually talks about this. Paul talks about the, two, the differences between the two covenants and he compares how the glory of the old has faded and yet the glory of the new is so much greater than the glory the old ever had. 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16 says this. It says, But a natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. But the one who is spiritual discerns all things, yet he himself is discerned by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Here is the thing that the devil is going to try to do with this message. He's going to try to twist it and pervert it in any way he can. Why? Because he knows the power that comes with believing what God has said in his word. He knows the power of the new covenant that we have the opportunity to walk in. The power of walking in freedom that Jesus has provided. He doesn't want us to walk in that freedom. So here's my encouragement to you is don't judge what's being said here by the flesh or by tradition or even by what you've heard in the past, instead, take it to the Holy Spirit in prayer. Get on your knees before the Lord or wherever you need to go to get personal with the Lord and say, God, is this something that you're really saying? And if so, please show me. And I believe the Holy Spirit will be very specific and very faithful to reveal the truth to you. 
This is what Romans 8, 9 through 11 says. It says, However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you in you. I'm about to share this prophecy that the Lord has given me in a few minutes, but before I can do that, I believe the Holy Spirit is stopping me right here, right now, and he's saying, call my people back into a relationship with me. There are some people watching right now or listening to this, and you know that you've never had that experience of the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. The word right here says, very specifically in Romans, it says, but if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to to him. Y'all, this should shake us to our core if you do not have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling inside of you. You need to come to him right now. Now is the time. It doesn't matter how long you've done religion. It doesn't matter how long you've gone to church or to mass or anything like that. That's not going to cut it. The only way to the Father is through Christ Jesus. The only way to the Father is through believing what Jesus did on the cross and starting a personal relationship with him. Jesus said about himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We cannot come to God through our works. We cannot come to God even through our passion or our devotion. We have to come to God through believing the message of the gospel, that Jesus came to earth fully God and fully man, He lived a perfect life, and then he died on a cross, taking the punishment for all of our sins upon himself. And when we believe that, we get to start that relationship with God, and we get to walk in the life that he provides. We get to receive eternal life, but we also get to receive life to the full today, abundant life. Jesus said, I have come that you would have life and life to the full. I'm encouraging you to pray with me right now. If you know you need God's Spirit to dwell in you, you want to know Jesus personally, you want to be in God's family, do not put this off. Do not wait, my friend. Today is the day, right now. This is it. Things are going to change right now as you surrender your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for trying to live this life my way. I am sorry for trying to get to God another way other than through you. Say, I need you, Jesus. I need you to forgive me. I need you to change me. I need you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Say, I repent of my sins right now, and I turn to you, Lord, for salvation. Say, I believe, Jesus, you are the Son of God, and you came to the earth as a man, and you lived a perfect life, and then you died on a cross, and when you did that, you took the punishment for my sin upon yourself. And I believe, on the third day, you rose again, and now you are seated at the right hand of the Father. And because of what you did for me, I get to receive the Holy Spirit. Say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed with me, please let me know in the comments. It means so much to me to be able to see that and to be able to actually have the chance to pray with you, pray for you, and to celebrate with you. Y'all can probably hear my son crying in the background, but I'm going to keep going anyways, y'all, because I'm feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit right now. Before I share this prophecy about the papacy that the Lord gave me, it's very specific. The Lord asked me to read this verse, this, this collection of verses. It's 2 Corinthians 8, and starting in verse 1. And what I want you to look at as I read this is look at the love that's flowing out of these people. These, these new believers in Jesus, these converts, these people who have received the life of Jesus Christ, look at the motivation behind their actions. How they're not being motivated out of fear or obligation or out of 
you know, a desire to, to work to please God. Instead, they're being motivated out of the, the love that they've received from the Father. They just want to be a part of his kingdom. And they're just so grateful to be a part of his family. Okay, I'm going to read this. It says, Now, brothers and sisters, we make known to you the grace of God which has been given in the churches in Macedonia, that in a great ordeal of affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in the wealth of their liberality. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave voluntarily begging us with much urging for the favor of participation in the support of the saints. And this, not as we had expected, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. This is verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. I give my opinion in this matter, for this is to your advantage, who were the first to begin a year ago, not only to do this, but also to desire to do it, but now finish doing it also, so that just as there was the willingness, so there may be also the completion of it by your ability. For if the willingness is present, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. Verse 18, We have sent along with him the brother whose fame in the things of the gospel have spread through all the churches. So this is what I believe the Holy Spirit is pointing out through these verses. Is that when the gospel changes our hearts, it's no longer a drudgery or an obligation or a chore to be obedient to the Lord and do the things he's asking us to do. Instead, we are overflowing with liberality and generosity and we just want other people to know what Jesus has done. We want to give to people. We want to serve people. We want to love people. We want to support people because of what Jesus has done for us, because of his love for us. We want to spread the gospel with as many people as we can. And no, none of us are perfect at doing that. But the closer we get to Jesus and the more that we accept his love and receive that love from him, the more that it's going to be overflowing out of our hearts. And it's not going to be a religious thing. It's going to be a beautiful, wonderful relationship with our Savior. This is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me about the papacy. He said, The papacy is about to update its ribbon, change its colors, change its mind. He said, A new religion springs into being, but where am I in the mix? Where is my spirit? There will be a break off, a third party split, down the middle and off to two sides, multiple angles, multiple visions, man's plan gone awry. And then he said this as an encouragement to his people. He said, move forward in the presence of my glory and with a desire for the kingdom above the things of this earth. Many people are going to be left wondering, what are we to do now? Which way do we turn? And then he said, what isn't up is down. And I know he's referring there to His wisdom and His plan moving forward versus our wisdom and our plan. The Word says that God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The next thing the Lord said was this, Go back, says the Lord of hosts. Go back to what it once was. Look back and see from where you have come. Behold, the purity and providence found in the days of old is returning. I'm bringing my saints back to a place of rest from their works, a place of joy in me and freedom from captivity. The next thing I heard was, do not be concerned with what is to come, with what comes next. All you need is me, says the Lord. I will lead you through this mess, this mix of problems and convoluted decisions. Just rely on me and you will be just fine, says the Lord. Just look to me in the still and quiet places. Rest in the work I've accomplished in your behalf. You don't have to save yourself. I will save you as you cry out to me. And I was reminded of Romans 10, 13, which says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The last thing I heard was this. Remain in my glory and get ready to shake the nations, says the Lord. Get ready to rise to new heights, to conquer new foes, and to make a heavenly mark on history in a way you 
never have before. Thank you, Holy Spirit.